Yes, so get your strap and have it nearby because after we do our warm ups, we will be using the strap. So, feet hip width apart, toes straight ahead. Sitting bones down toward the formed, nice open hips, shoulders back and down. And just coming into your mountain pose, get that core activated, supporting your spine. Ribs toward your spine, lift toward your heart, up through the crown. Take a few moments and just focus inward. Get your yoga perspective and remember where you put your attention. That's where the energy and activation goes. Inhale, bring your arms to shoulder level. Stretch the fingertips out. Exhale, bring your hands to your heart, keeping the elbows right at shoulder level. Inhale, bring your arms to the front, shoulders still down. And then bring your hands behind you. Just clasp the fingers and press them down. Just lift your heart and stretch your head back. Spread your toes out, no gripping, and just lift and stretch. Exhale, pivot at your hips, come on over. So bring your hands up toward the ceiling as much as you can, getting those shoulders working a little. Move your chin around, releasing your neck. Bend your knees slightly, lift your ribs, sitting bones down, and just from the bottom of the spine, wind your way all the way to the top. And again, lift your heart, stretch your head back. Don't lift your chin too high. You want the back of your neck to keep stretching and drop those shoulders down. And on an inhalation, come back upright, releasing into mountain pose and just observing that energy beginning to flow a little bit warmer through the spine and the body. And then again, inhale, arms at shoulder level. Exhale, hands to your chest, stretch to the front. And clasp your hands the opposite way behind you. So shift those fingers one position over. Lift your heart, stretch your head back. Keep your hips over the ankles. And exhale, pivoting at your hips. And come on into your forward position. Hands up, head down. And again, just relax there for a few breaths. Stretch your legs, straighten the knees if you can. And then with the knees slightly bent, come on back all the way up, just winding from the bottom of the spine all the way into the back bend. And again, remember, no lifting the chin, just stretch out through the base of the skull, out through the crown. And after a few breaths there, come on back into mountain pose, just feeling your spine a little more activated. And then we need to stretch the sides, so bring your arms out, Palms toward the ceiling, hands above your shoulders. Pass them in press. Bring your arms back by your ears. Stretch your head up, sitting bones down. Lean to the side, no twist. So remember, don't lean forward. Push the sitting bones, or the foot you're leaning away from down, out through the hands, and get those ribs opening a little bit more. Inhale back up. Switch the hands so the other one's in front. Spread your toes, stretch the spine, no twist, just lean. Then again, push the foot you're leaning away from down. Feel those ribs stretch apart as you reach out through your head and your hands. And again, inhale back upright, exhale into mountain pose. Take a breath, relaxing, shoulders circling a couple of times. And stretch your spine apart for a twist. So base of the skull, base of the spine, stretch apart, opening those bones so they can move. Inhale, arms to shoulder level, palms toward the ceiling, hands above your shoulders, and clasp elbows. Pull those arms back by your ears, stretch the spine, sitting bones down, and twist to one side. Keep the weight on both feet as evenly as you can. Stretch in the twist and exhale over. So just deepen into that forward position as much as you want. Even though you're leaning toward one side, see if you can keep the weight on both feet as evenly as possible. And then staying in the twist, inhale your way back up and upper body back bend with the chest high, looking toward the ceiling just slightly. Stretch the back of the neck through the whole spine in your twist, but remember, don't overbend in your lower back. Take a breath or two, 
And then inhale, excuse me, up. Exhale, round to the center. Switch your arms. Bring your arms back by your ears again and stretch the spine apart. Exhale, turning to the opposite side. Take a breath. Exhale, over. And again, just deepen as much in that twist forward position as you want. Lift your sitting bones, maybe keep the legs as straight as feels okay. And then slowly bending your knees slightly on the way up. Work your way into that upper body back bend. And again, only as much as your body would like. Shoulders down, don't work that low back too much. And then inhale upright, exhale around to the center. Extended mountain shoulders are down, sitting bones are down, fingertips are up. Sink evenly into your feet, spread those toes. And then pivot, hinging forward, get parallel to the floor with the upper body and stretch, and then drop in your end. Take a breath or two there, pull in a little deeper with your hands behind your legs, if you like that back of your body to stretch. And then arms to the front, and one more wind up, coming back into mountain pose. As you get back into your position, just take a moment Checking your posture and noticing how things have maybe warmed up a little bit more. Bring your hands to your heart. Inhale, hands toward the ceiling, thumbs back, looking at them as you come into a little back bend. Exhale, keep your hands in focus as you pivot all the way over into Ryan Dog. Hands up under your knees on your shins, stretch and straighten halfway up. Everything straight, elbows, knees, and spine. Exhale back into ragdoll, bend your knees again. Let's do one more wind up. Bringing your shoulders up, back, and down, circling them a couple of times to get that neck area releasing a little bit more. And then our balance warm up, spread your toes on your favorite balance foot. Remember, no gripping, that gives you less space at the foot. So lift the toes. Get the base balls of the foot all the way across and the heel supporting it. Make sure you're rolled in so the knee is going toward your second toe. Ankle, knee, hip, and shoulder lined up. Core is activated. That means ribs toward your spine and up so you feel that core working to support you. Ground to the ceiling and then bring the other foot up. Don't cross it over. Just bring it up straight. Only as far as your body wants to go. And then try circling your ankle so we don't get old stiff ankles and fall and break our hips. So we're going to work those hips today. And flex and point, release, and bring that foot back there. Spread those toes, get that side rounded and anchored. Inhale, and bring the other leg up. Remember, the core is active, everything is aligned, you're bringing that foot up. Again, you can keep it close to the floor if your balance is challenged today on this side. And circling the ankle, get it flexible and working. And then flex some point before you release if you can. And back into mountain pose, just feel your body there. And oh, let's get our strap. So, whatever kind of strap you're using, you're going to put the flat part of the strap, and it can be a tie or a belt or a piece of fabric. It doesn't really matter what it is. It just put that across the ball of the foot area, base of the toes, on one of your feet. And then hold the strap in your hand or hands. Get your other foot grounded. So remember, all that alignment, all that activation, and bring your foot through the front. So as much as you can, just stick that foot out as straight as you can, pulling on the toes back, pushing out through the heel. Take a breath, and slowly lower that leg. Shift your strap over to the other foot. Again, just around the base of the toe area. And keep the foot flexed as you again get everything lined up and balanced 
and activate it and bring the other foot up. Again, press out through the heel, pull those toes back, get as balanced and straight as you can. If you need to go out and in, of course, you can do that. And again, slowly lower the leg. And when it gets back down, let's do that one more time, adding a little bit. So base of the toes on the strap, holding the strap with one or both hands. Get your alignment, get your activation, and again, slowly pull the foot to the front. If you get there and that's working for you and you want to, we're going to open it up out toward the side. And back toward the center. And slowly down. Exhale, all that balance stress. And move the strap to the other side. And again, holding your strap, sinking into your balanced foot, getting everything core activated and aligned. Bring the other foot up. Keep holding it there. Or if you feel like you have a little confidence, you can bring that leg out to the side. And again, back to the center. And release. Exhale, stress and tension from that. And we're down with the stretch for the moment, so just put it aside. Take a moment back into mountain pose. Exhale, all that balance stress. And bring your shoulders back and down. Angle your feet slightly out. We're going to be bending the toes, remember, toward the second toes. And we're going to go into our frog squat. So either hands to your knees, just coming down a little bit, and then back up. Or go all the way, exhaling down to the floor, knees toward the toes, pushing those sitting bones back so those knees don't go too far forward. And then again, back up. So a couple of times, just exhaling slowly down to wherever you're going and inhaling back. And then you can make it faster if you want to, breathing with it, exhaling down, inhaling up, just energizing yourself, getting those knees and hips working a little bit more, pushing the hips back and standing straight up, breathing. Feel your shoulders as well as you come up, pulling those shoulders back, opening the heart as you come back to your standing position. Feel the back of the body stretching across the shoulders as you go down as well. So just be paying attention to your whole body. And then the next time you're up, pause, bring your feet back to the front and release back into it. Take a breath and bring your hands to your heart. Inhale. Hands toward the ceiling, another little back bend just because we love them. Exhale, hands to your heart, pivot on over, ragdoll. Hands up in that under the knee position, into that halfway up stretch. Spread your toes, straighten your arms and legs and spine. Bend your knees and exhale all the way to the floor, transitioning into our child pose, exhaling. And relaxing forehead toward the mat, hips back on your hands. Take a breath or two there. Let everything stretch. And then inhale and sit up on your heels, coming off and into staff position. We're going to warm up those hip rotators a little bit more. So it'll be easier to do what we did standing while we're on the floor. So press out through your heels and bring one foot up to that opposite thigh, letting the knee come down. Oh, feel those tight hips. Yeah, let the knee just relax. If it's really tight today, remember, you can put some padding behind you for a little extra tilt or bring your leg over to the side. So keep the knee and toes up wherever that front leg is. And just add your weight on your hand, but don't press if you want to. Just a little weight, not pressure to let that hip release a little bit more. Knee coming down as much as it wants. Just feel that hip pelvis joint area getting a little bit of release. Exhale, let it really relax. 
And then bring your foot and knee into your hands or pull your arms around and rotate back and forth for that hip rotator, just like they call it. So get it moving. If it's good there, you can move higher or closer for more intensity, but that is optional always for a small practice. And when that feels like that's a little bit easier, release that leg and feel the difference on the two sides. Yeah, this one's much more activated, so we need to balance and do the other one. So bring that opposite foot up, knee coming down toward the floor. Again, one side may be tighter than the other. If it is, you can bring that leg over or put some extra padding where you need it. And just relax. A little weight, but not pressure if you want. Take a breath. Keep pushing out through the heel, pulling back with the toes. And don't forget to keep breathing. The more you exhale, the more things relax and release. So don't stress and strain anything. And again, as it opens a little bit more, get ready for our rotation, bringing that leg up and moving it back and forth. A little higher or closer if you love it or not, always personal practice. And as that gets a little bit easier, go ahead and release that leg. Feel how they are a little bit more lubricated and ready to move. So bring your feet to the end of the mat, coming into staff position, core activated to slowly roll to the mat. Bring your body down. Make sure your strap was next to you because we're going to be using it. So a little reclined integration, just get comfortable on the floor. Sitting bones toward your heels, slightly back, pressing down. We're going to bend the, let's do the right leg. And again, put that strap around the base of your toes, that ball of the foot area, and extend the leg up to the ceiling as straight as you can. Keep pulling on the strap to keep those toes going toward your head and keep pushing out through your heel. Hold the strap in both hands. Get those shoulders down toward the floor. And then just gently pull the leg towards you a little bit more. Straighten the knee as much as you can. So remember, kneecap pull towards your thigh, tightening the front of your thigh. That helps that hamstring get a little more straightening and stretch on the back of your leg. So if you're really flexible, you may be able to pull that strap and get that leg much closer to your head. But just do it to wherever it feels right for you. Other legs straight out. You can make that a little easier if you want to bend the knee and put the foot on the floor with the heel by your sitting bone. And then we're going to bring the leg over to the right side, right leg over to the right side, pulling on the strap to keep those toes coming toward you. And just let this inner thigh release a little bit as we rotate that leg down toward the floor. So it may never get to the floor. It may stay way up in the air. That's okay. Just go wherever you go to. And then breathe. Hold that strap. Relax. Let the side of your foot go down toward the floor as much as it wants to. Or not. Always, you know, just go wherever you want. Keep this other hip down. So if it's kind of rolling over, kind of push it back down with your hand. And that will help to keep it on the floor. So just relax as you go, because when you relax, those muscles stretch more easily. Just let it go wherever it wants to. As you breathe and relax and forget about it, they will go further. Maybe it'll even reach the floor. Don't worry if it doesn't go. Take a breath. Exhale, tension. And then still pulling on your strap, bring that leg all the way back up toward the ceiling as straight as you can be. And keep pulling on the strap, switch the strap into your left hand. You can bring the right hand out to the side and that shoulder. And just rotate. So you're going to roll over onto the left hip as you bring that foot down toward the floor. So this is our twist. Just bring that foot as much toward the floor as it wants to go. It may be up in the air again, but just keep pulling on the strap. Turn your head, look at the other side, and just allow that twist to happen as much as it wants with the strap 
Going. Take a breath, keep your shoulder down for the twist. Be up on that side of your left hip as that foot comes over toward the left side. And then pulling on your strap, bring it back straight up to the ceiling again, rolling out to your back. Keep flexing the foot, pulling the toes toward you, the heel away. Keep that kneecap coming toward your thigh, tightening the thigh so that back of your leg is giving a nice little stretch. And then either keeping hold of the strap as you lower the leg or releasing the strap and lowering the leg using the core for support, bring that foot to the floor. As it gets down, notice the difference on the two sides. And of course, get your strap ready because we'll balance the body on the other side. So sitting bones toward your heel, wrap the strap around the base of your foot, base of the toes, and pull the toes toward you, pushing the heel away, getting that back of the leg as straight as it wants to be on this side, maximizing for your body, doing what's right for you. So if it doesn't fit, if it doesn't straighten all the way, that's okay. Just keep it as straight as you can, remembering to focus on that front of the leg so that the back of the leg can relax more. Like Holding the strap this time on the left side. We're going to pull that toe area toward you as you lower the leg toward the floor. Hip down. You can hold it with the right hand to make sure that it doesn't rise up. You can keep that other foot flexed out and straight, or you can bend it and bring the heel in near your hip if that's easier for your body. And again, go wherever your body goes. Notice one side may be tighter than the other. Don't worry about that. Just go wherever and then relax. Keep breathing. Remember, the more you exhale, the more those things release and relax. Those muscles don't tighten, they, they just release, and your body will go a little further. Ultimately, it may make it all the way down to the floor, or not, it doesn't really matter, just doing what's right for you. Keep that other hip as much down toward the floor as you can, as you have that leg, wherever it goes. Take a breath, one more release. And then again, holding the strap, bring the leg all the way back up. Pull it toward you and flex, push the heel away, switch the strap to the other hand, arm out at shoulder level, so you come into your twist. You're rolling all the way onto the right hip as that leg comes across and down toward the floor. Remember that lower back will work into a twist as it goes. If you make it all the way to the floor, that's probably maximizing it. But if you don't want to maximize or can't, that's okay. Just go wherever your leg reaches. Turn your head for that neck area twist. Keep the shoulder down, shoulders down for the middle back twist. And again, keep pulling on the strap, getting those toes coming toward your body. Take a breath. Just maximize for yourself. And when you're ready, just holding the strap, roll back onto your back, put back toward the ceiling. Go on the strap, keeping those toes toward you, straightening the back of the leg as much as feels good. Keeping the strap in your hand, you can lower or just use your abs to release that foot all the way to the floor. And you can put your strap aside because we're done with it. Take a moment, just a reclined integration, letting your body soften and sink. Feel those hips and legs, let them release and relax. And we'll do one more twist. So bring your arms up to two position. Bend your right knee and put the foot on the left thigh. We're doing our bent knee twist. So go ahead and roll all the way to the left side. Hands together, head on the floor, and knee down to the floor. Hold your hand on the right knee, left hand on the right knee, right hand above your shoulder, looking up toward the ceiling on it, palm open. Keep that arm at shoulder level, so not up toward your head or down toward your foot as you let that hand from behind you into your twist. The more you hold the knee on the floor, the more that lower back is in the twist. 
Let it release a little if you need to. Turn your head, neck twist. Remember, relax that. Don't go too far. You may not be able to look all the way towards your hand. That's okay. Just do what's right for you. And always, just like gravity, bring that hand to the floor, letting things relax. You'll notice when we do this twist, your hand may not make it to the floor. When we use the strap to do the twist, your leg might not make it to the floor because your arm was all the way down. That's a function of your spine, and it works on either position. Take a breath. Just maximize or minimize whatever's right for your body. And letting go of your knee, roll onto your back, and slide the foot near the other way, getting ready for a second twist to the other side. Sitting bones toward your heels, bending your left leg with um, the right foot. Head on the floor as you roll all the way to your right side, hands together and knee down. Keeping your knee on the floor with your right hand, left hand to the ceiling. Exhale, lower it behind you. And again, turn your head for that neck twist. Let the hand go as far as it wants to go. Remember, you never have to go all the way in everything to the floor if that's not right for your body. Take a breath. Always just emphasizing those exhalations to allow those spine ligaments to release letting things relax even more. Another breath, letting that high end and shoulder come further toward the floor as your body is ready to do it. And of course, holding twists on your own at home is always going to be more effective. So just hold as long as you want to when you practice on your own. But for now, just release your knee, roll onto your back, Slide the foot near the other one. Bring your hands down toward your hips, away from your sides, letting those shoulders release down into the floor, coming into corpse position for our final relaxation. Toes toward each other and then just relax that lower body. Feel those hips, feel this area totally open after all our stretching and twisting. Hands, palms up so those shoulders can relax. Take a deep breath. Let your body grow heavy. Just sink deeply into that surface beneath you. And as your body softens and sinks, just let it release from your awareness. Allowing everything to release and relax. And as you breathe more deeply and stretch more completely through the whole body, just let it go into that earth embrace. And release thoughts of your body from your mind as it softens and sinks. And as your mind releases the body, just let the thoughts flow in and out as easily as your breath. No need to focus on the content of any thoughts. Forget the past. Don't worry about the future. Just let the thoughts move in and out without attention. And allow your awareness to release both your body and your mind. Find that peace within and fill your body, fill your mind, and just be peace.
If you have more time to keep relaxing the body, you can try and do as much relaxing as you can. If it's time to get ready for the rest of your day, just begin drawing energy and awareness with the breath back to the moment, to the run, to your body. And as you breathe more fully, just begin moving your body gently, stretching however feels good for you today. And as you stretch and breathe more fully and completely, when you're ready for your yoga hug of appreciation, put your sitting bones toward your heels, back to the floor, heels in toward your hips, and pull your knees up toward your heart. Wrap your arms around, give yourself that appreciative yoga hug. Let your body know you appreciate its yoga work today and the work your body does for you every day. And when you're ready to release, head and feet to the floor, roll over to the side, and sit back up, getting ready for the rest of your day. Thanks for joining me.